Hello everyone. So here's the situation. We're flying an instrument approach procedure and some equipment fails. Could be equipment on the ground or equipment in the aircraft. Now, can we fly that IAP? Can we fly that instrument approach procedure and land? Hmm, wouldn't it be nice if there was a table somewhere that would list the inoperative equipment and state what it is that we as pilots should do? You know, if there were such a table, you know what I'd call it? I think I'd call it the inoperative components table. Hey, guess what? There is such a table and it is found in the TERPS or the TPP, the Terminal Procedures Publication. And you'll never guess what that table is called. It is called the Inoperative Components Table. Well, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy and our instrument rating course. I'm Mike Thompson, I'm your host, and boy, are we glad you are here watching these videos. Please hit the subscribe button, and remember, these videos alone will not make you successful in the course. To be successful in the course, there are three key elements. Number one, you are enrolled in EPIC's instrument rating course online. Number two, you're watching these videos. And number three, you're gonna review all of this content one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. Now, back to that inoperative components table. You can see a copy of that right here. And notice that it has five sections. Now, before we get into those five sections, I wonder how it is that a pilot would be made aware of inoperative components or visual aids. Hmm, well, I can think of at least three ways. Number one, I might be made aware of this inoperative equipment via NOTAM, a notice to airmen or a notice to air missions. Number two, I might be made aware of inoperative equipment by listening to the ATIS prior to my arrival at an airport. Or, obviously, if the inoperative equipment were on board my aircraft, then, of course, I would be aware of it that way. Now, back to that table and these five highlighted sections. What happens when we, as pilots, are made aware of inoperative uh, equipment or components or visual aids on the ground? We go through all five sections of the table, you can see those highlighted here, and we select each that applies to that approach. Now, what you'll do is you will select the most restrictive correction that applies. If you're dealing with more than one component failure, you will select the most restrictive correction out of all of those. So, let's see how this table works by using a scenario. Now, in our scenario, we're going to be shooting the straight-in ILS-17 left at Orlando International, or MCO. And you can see that instrument approach procedure shown here. Now, notice on this procedure, the minimums for our approach are 290 feet MSL and 1800 RVR. So here we are, we're inbound to Orlando, and of course we listen to the ATIS, and we find out on the ATIS now that both the RVR and the ALSIF-2 are inoperative. So, referring back to section two of our inoperative components table, what do we raise our minimums to? Well, if you look at the table, because the RVR is in-op, 
We have to raise the minimum visibility requirements to one half statute mile or 2,400 feet. So the 1,800 foot RVR from my approach chart now has to be increased to 2,400 feet. Now, in addition to that, see in section two, it shows us that with an ALSIF 2 in op, we have to raise the minimum visibility requirements to 4,000 RVR. Now, I'd like you to have a look at this conversion table and see that it tells us that 4,000 RVR is approximately three quarters of a statute mile. So, to complete our scenario, which is the more restrictive? Increasing to a half a mile, which is 2,400 RVR because of the RVR failure? Or increasing to 4,000 RVR, which is three quarters of a statute mile because of the ALSIF 2 failure. Exactly, you got it. We go to three quarters of a statute mile visibility for this approach in that scenario. Now, here's another question. Would there ever be a situation where the in-op components table would not apply? To answer that, be sure to check the briefing strip. Now, have a look at our example here. This is the ILS or localizer 7 left into Daytona Beach. And note, we have it highlighted in yellow, the inoperable table will not apply for ILS 7 left. Hmm. Well, why would the table be there? Because it would still apply if I was shooting the localizer approach or circling. Well, folks, that just about wraps up our information on the inoperative components table. Be sure to join us next time.